Welcome back, MTG Joe here. We're here for another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. Uh, this particular video will be for the historic best of one format. Uh, we'll try to cover all the formats this week, but we usually cover all best of one and best of three arena formats, provided there's enough of a sample size each week. Uh, we get the data as always from GG companion tool, runs alongside Arena Client, tracks win rates, loss rates, deck collection, in-game overlays, whole bunch of useful features that you can leverage for free. Uh, link is in the video description. I'll also paste all these deck lists into the video description so you can easily import them and go from there. And lastly, before we jump in, as always, it's greatly appreciated if you can drop a like, comment, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel. In addition to these meta videos, we do gameplay, frequently mythic in the first day or two of the season, got to number one mythic so in the past, so we have a good track record of high quality magic here on the channel. Um, so let's jump into it. It's October 11th to the 18th, seven day set. Uh, Platinum to Mythic rank 45,000 games. We've had a couple weeks now with the new Baldur's Gate stuff and uh, largely haven't seen any of it, not Baldur's Gate, Dominary United, Alchemy cards. None of it has really made its way into Historic. Uh, notably, the one nerf is uh, Diviner of Fates has been nerfed from being a 2-3 to a 2-1, which has seen some play in some of the Esper Greasefang decks and some of the reanimator decks but doesn't show up this week so just make you mention of that in case you see some difference but top performing deck of the week is boros affinity thousand games played 64 percent win rate this is an alt alt uh, another content creator got to number one mythic and best of three with it but it's there's quite a few decks that are playing retrofitter foundry as kind of a combo piece uh and it kind of seems like a slow commander card but you play this on turn one and you play ornithopter well it's got the subtext thopter and then you can just skip all these other modes and just tap and sack so you get a turn one four four at instant speed colorless uh, construct which is pretty sweet you're pairing that with stuff like toolcraft exemplar which becomes a three two first strike uh, when it attacks you have esper sentinel that taxes your opponent shadow sphere as lifelink and trample portable holes in there as ways to kind of deal with some early stuff Barbed Spike is basically an artifact equipment that also comes with a Thopter, which can be upgraded. Ingenious Smith helps you find stuff. Mashiko for power-ups plays really nicely with the Trample from Shadow Sphere. And then Yotai declares war as a way to either create Thopters, be removal, or buff up something to 4-4. You also have like Darksteel Citadel in here that can be animated uh, and also adds to your artifact count. So... This deck's pretty sweet. I got a video coming out, recorded it last week, but I haven't had a chance to get everything going with the MIQ, so that'll be up if you're interested in seeing that in action. Uh, the next deck is actually my variation of Wizards, and I can tell because I was the only one playing Strangle for a while, and I'm on no uh, expressive iteration, all Mentor's Guidance, 64% um, win rate. Um, this version here, Wizards is a heavily played deck on in best of one, um, there's a lot of different variations like counts, so this matches is probably not truly indicative. But if your opponent's on the play and they go Symmetry Sage, you really need to kill it on turn one. And typically, play with fire does not allow you to do that. And then you also need to have a wizard in play to get the like the, the cost reduction from Wizard's Lightning. If they're on the play, they usually go Symmetry Sage, they'll have a burn spell if you go like Soul Scar Mage. So it kind of limits what you can do there. Strangles really help that match up. Um, you're still trying to have really explosive draws by doing Reckless Charge to give something haste uh, with paired with Symmetry Sage. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist can flash back pretty much any spell in this deck, either from the buff from Balmor, Symmetry Sage, or the Reckless Charge, and that lets you get extra casts out of like Mentor's Guidance for extra card advantage and stuff like that. Um, went up the Ardawaro as an additional land in this deck uh, just to give you, bring you up to 21. Uh, seldomly comes up, but it was good, like, for example, in one game uh, versus I was playing against nine lives. You bounce the solemnity, so then you can get around the nine lives lock. Um, so with that deck there, I am 40 and 15 uh, leading into Mythic. Um, so you can see, like, against the decks, the Rakdos deck, which we'll cover in a sec, is actually the hardest matchup. Wizards was kind of a coin flip. Was losing to Reanimator a bit, but largely against like not like any kind of like random deck, 
that's not heavy in removal, you can usually just run them over as you can see uh, with that, especially decks that don't have any sort of interaction. Um, then we then go to Esper Affinity. So again, it's another similar artifact themed deck. While this version here is not on the uh, Retrofitter Foundry, uh, it does have a number of kind of artifact themes and it's really built around in Soul Artifact and all that glitters to give big bumps. You have Vault Scourge in this deck here that gets the added uh, bonus of being flying lifelink and you can cast it for one mana. You strap on like an, an Insole Artifacts, all that glitters, and you can kind of go to town helping you race. You have Unblockable with Ginger Brute. Uh, Patchwork Automaton has Protection and Ward. You can put the Insole Artifact on the Dark Steel Citadel and uh, make it an indestructible threat. You also have the Razor Bridge, Razor Tide Bridge, which is another indestructible artifact line that can be used as well. Um, this should just be any untapped land. I play Hallowed Fountain. Uh, the mana base looks very basic. This actually, I don't think, has any rares. So this is completely like free-to-play historic deck that's got a 60% win rate, which is pretty sweet. Um, so if you're looking for a really budget-friendly deck, this is definitely one. If you have Pathways, if you have Hallowed Fountains, um, if you have the Blue-White Pain Land, all are good additions to this mana base as well. We then go to Selesnia Life Gain. This is a Heliod combo deck. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Heliod, Sun Crowned, Scurry Oak, and any when a creature enters a battlefield, gain a life creature. Gives you infinite life, infinite squirrel tokens, and something can have infinite power. And the way that happens is Heliod, when a creature, whenever you gain life, you put a counter on something. The, the Scurry Oak enters the battlefield, triggering the life gain from one of these dorks. Uh, you put the counter on Scurry Oak, which creates then a squirrel, and then gains you a life, and you keep repeating and repeating and repeating, and you click, 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 and eventually you uh, make your opponent either concede, or you create enough squirrels and you kill them that way there. You have the Fair Game Backup Plan with Trellisara and Voice of the Blessed to make big creatures, and you have Collected Company and Inquisitor Captain as both ways to find uh, your various combo pieces with the deck, and then Skyclave Apparition is some removal spell to help get rid of like Ferocidon or any sort of hate piece or even just kind of slow down your opponent's game plan. Uh, the deck I kept losing to a lot of uh, wizards is Rakdos Midrange. Um, so 59%, 200 games. Like I'd say, when your opponent goes Shieldred into Season Pyromancer, draw a bunch of cards, gains a bunch of life, it just, it breaks your soul. Uh, also with like Fable, so it's very similar to like the Explorer deck that we see um, you're basically getting the upgrade of Season Pyromancer to refill your hand, as well as Molten Impact as a flexible removal spell. And then you, in addition, you have Inquisition of Kozilek. But just a lot of like flexible removal, Fatal Push, Heartless Act, Molten Impact, Blood Tithe can be removal. You have Stomp, Fable to copy the stuff, uh, kind of all mixed in. And then you have the Creature Lands mixed into there as well. Uh, this deck was actually very good against the Wizards deck. A lot of times I just felt hopeless against it. Uh, then we go to Mono Green Elves, 58% win rate. Uh, so this is a deck that's looking to generate a whole bunch of mana and then kind of combo kill your opponent. So you have eight true one mana accelerants and then Jaspera, which is like trying its best to be a one mana accelerant. Uh, you want to try to go into like Collected Company uh, to kind of get more stuff out, but then either like Circle the Dream Druids or Elvish Arch Druid generates a whole bunch of mana. You also have Growing Rites of Itlamog, which can flip and then become Gaia's Cradle. And then when you get all that mana, you pump it either into Elvish Warmaster or Allosaur Shepherd, and you overrun your opponent that way there. There's a lot of different ways to build this deck. Um, some are on the Crater Hoof plan, some aren't. This version is looking to just be more of a mana elf ball, and then you have Leaf Crown Visionary to draw you a bunch of cards, or Realm Walker to play off the top of your library. And then lastly, Mono Red Aggro, 55% win rate. Uh, this particular deck is looking to smork face as fast as possible. Uh, this one's a little bit heavier on the three drops, actually. Um, but you have stuff like Reckless Ringleader that can give these other cards haste. So it can give Annex haste, Bone Crusher, Chain Whirler, stuff like that. Uh, two drops, just one Kari Zev in addition to the Robber and the Burning Tree. Uh, but really with this deck here, you're looking to either Torbrand and Smack for a lot of damage or Ember Cleave them out. Ferocidon shuts off life gain strategies. Uh, if you have a Torbrand out and you cast Chain Whirler, it does three damage to each of your opponent's creatures. 
So also a nice little combination of spells that way there. Um, so that's pretty much it for the format. Um, largely, I found... So Mono Red's worst matchup is Wizards. And I found with just so much Wizards, it's become very hard to play Mono Red. I typically always played Mono Red uh, in like all my game, like for most of my r ranking up. Uh, let's see. I haven't played it in a while. Uh, we can do current and previous sets ranked, and then set it most recent, most played, mono red historic. So I've played this deck a lot. Even just like mo this is like my go-to mobile uh, deck as well. Um, I'm on Lelia, which has been really good just for card advantage. I find Torbrand a little slow, and then I'm on a little bit more interaction to hedge against the Wizard's plan with Play with Fire and Lightning Strike. This helps with some card advantage, but uh, largely Wizards is tough, because if you don't have the Lightning Strike on time, they just kind of overwhelm you. And uh, like sometimes you get your Ferocidon, sometimes you don't against Life Gain, but largely like if we look at my win rates, it's positive against everything except for the uh, Wizards matchup. And... This was Cat Oven from way back then. The deck could not be Cat Oven. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I wouldn't be super high on Mono Red. The artifact decks are really good, as well as Wizards. That's why I kind of turned to Wizards for this season. So I'm going to wrap this up for the week. Uh, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one, and stay safe out there.